Hiya, we're teaching Tilt Brush. And today we're gonna to look at the very basic brush painting. How to create lines where you want them, control them, and how the interaction between your palette and your brush lets you control how you're painting. I'm gonna be using the white screen today so we can focus on exactly what's going on here with our controllers, and we can see how we can create in the space around us. So I'm also gonna set my color to black so we can focus more on the paint brushes rather than the colors and the creativity side of it. So palette controller, set my color to black and now I'm gonna flip over to the brushes screen. This is the large full square grid, not the utilities with triangles and things, but our brushes are the different ways we're gonna paint. You'll notice we've got the main grid and then several buttons on the bottom. These let us flip through different lists of brush types. If your brush type doesn't look quite the same as mine, in our controller, one of the options we have is to show more advanced or beginner tools. But the brush palette should be the same either way. It's got a list of different types of brush. If you use your brush controller to point at them, it will show you what it's called. I'm going to scroll back to the very first page of brushes. These are what we're going to focus on today. Just using our tools to get lines on the screen. And the most basic brushes are going to be these. So it's the very first page. There's no more left that I can go here. We'll be playing with some of these other tools in later, uh, uh, later tutorials. So each of these tools are for just drawing plain lines. So magic markers Flat refers to just flat colors of paint. With a magic marker, if I click while I'm pointing on it, my brush is now a magic marker. With the brush, the size of that circle is the size of your lines. I've got a really big circle right now, so if I click my trigger finger, it's drawing a very big black line. It's supposed to look like a Sharpie. That's why it's called marker. If you use your thumb, you can slide to change the size of that circle. So I get a nice fine point sharpie and write my name. That type of thing. So the trigger finger to paint, in this case I'm using the marker. Now here's where if you want to, you can try changing your color palette. We can get a sharpie in any color we want. Green, red, just a matter of trigger finger when you're ready to draw the line. One of the helpful controls in the palette is undo. Just like in any other painting program, if you make a mistake, I really don't want these red lines here, on your thumb trigger, not only can you slide to change the thing, whoops, look at where you can see it, slide to change the thing, but if you just tap on the left edge, it acts as undo, takes back one step. You can see each time I tap, I'm losing another piece of marker. So draw with one hand, and if you make a mistake, undo just a tap on that edge. If you go too far, tapping the right edge, redo, allows you to step forward in time. Bearing in mind, if I step back to here and do something new, that does change the timeline. I can no longer step forward to get those original squiggles. I've now gone down a different trouser of the pants, a uh, different leg of the trousers of time. Uh, and extra internet points to people who got that reference. So we've got the marker tool and the related ones, tapered marker, just ends in a point. So it's a little more of a natural line as opposed to the square edged marker, which is blunt on both sides. They're just slightly different ways. Pinched, you can see, is tapered on both sides. Different effects that you may be going for can be achieved with these slight variations in the brush. Once again, that was the square edge marker, there was the tapered marker, and there was a pinched marker. So just different ways of drawing lines to get different results in your visual uh, field markers. The flat colors work pretty much the same way, but you'll notice with the flat marker, as you curves, you get shadows and highlights. The regular marker doesn't do it. It's just flat color no matter how your hand moves. So the flat 
actually acts more like a flat piece of ribbon. So as you change your angle of painting, you can see it creates different shadows and highlights as if it's almost a ribbon. Oops, too far. So we've got, again, blunt edges. We've got tapered edges. We've got pinched edges. But the flat is more of a three-dimensional ribbon as opposed to just a flat field of color. If I do this with the regular marker, it looks like one flat solid field. If I do this with the flat version, you can actually see sort of separate strips, separate pieces of ribbon. So that's the difference with our painting tools here. One set tends to be just fields of color, whereas the other set brings the actual three-dimensionality, shadows and highlights, into the artwork you're creating. The final set, the top one, actually gives you surface texture. So as I paint across here, you can see there's actual texture to my paint. You can see brush strokes as I'm painting. It helps if I get the highlights and the shadows right, nice and close to the camera. But you can see how the oil paint gives you a nice oil paintbrush kind of finish. Ink. You can see how's that soft, almost three-dimensional look. Instead of a flat ribbon, it's almost like pooling ink. It's hard to see with my highlights coming in different directions. There we go. Oh, whoops. Finally, thick paint. You get a lot of visual texture in this one. If I keep painting, it's almost like frosting on a birthday cake. That thick, rough texture or an adobe wall. So we've got these different tools for making painting, whether you actually wanted a texture like oil paint or just flat fields of color, trigger finger, laying it down, tap with your thumb to undo if you want to step back and try things again. Thumb size so I can paint at different sizes regardless of my texture to get different results in my, in my image, whether I'm trying to create a sculpture or uh, just present a field, a color, an abstract. The final set is just giving you slight variations. So this one, you can see it's translucent, transparent. I can actually draw behind it and in front of it and through it, and it acts almost like a cloud effect that you're painting. So these are translucent versions, highlighter pen, so you can still see the original text through what you're painting. So this last, whoops, let's get these out of the way. So this last column, same painting style, same painting technique, but now we're adding transparency effects. We're adding a little bit more versatility to what we're trying to create. So we could either do solid flat color or we could do transparent translucent color. All these are your main brushes using for basic painting in Tilt Brush. But with these, you can make any kind of fun stuff. It's a lot of fun just to use black with a thin marker, just to sketch out ideas, try fun stuff, do little flowers, that type of thing, just because it allows you to practice manipulating the world, creating ideas, having fun with it. Nobody needs to see this stuff but you, but there's no reason not to let yourself go and have a little creativity. So we'll be doing other tools, other variations as other lessons, but this class was about basic brush in Tilt Brush. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna try to do this every single week. Feel free to give us questions in the comments or in the chat. Uh, it helps if you spell this correctly. There we go. And we hope to see you in following weeks. This was Teaching Tilt Brush. <laughs>